So driver number one is really the main high level driver of the ROI. It's the defect injection and removal profile. Um, there's lots and lots of data and lots of research in this area. I've, I've just extracted four charts here that, that help to demonstrate it. Um, if I look top right as an example, you can see here in this piece of research by IEEE, requirements fix is costing $139. By the time it gets designed, it's almost three times that. To get to coding, it doubles, and now it's costing $1,000 a time. Testing is seven times more, and then maintenance is twice what testing is. Bottom left is some figures from NIST that are slightly more conservative, but interestingly split that mix down between the stage found and the stage that they're actually fixed. And then on the top left, there's a good chart here by Capers Jones, which is most people might be familiar with, which in blue shows the rate at which um, defects are introduced, a lot of them in coding phase, and then the rate at which they're fixed, and also there the cost for each of those defect fixes. So starting at $25 during coding, and by the time it's after release, it's 16,000. I think I worked that out as 640 times more. The other one final quote I would bring is from the IBM research. And this one I like because it sort of keeps things simple. And it's that sort of paradigm that it's $1 in requirements. It'll cost $10 in development, 100 times as much in test, and 1,000 times in the field. But everything's saying the same thing, that as the delay goes on, it's much, much more expensive to get these defects fixed. But to drill down and talk about them in a more meaningful way, it's very important to look at the underlying drivers.